Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. My Bible is sitting open again. It always is when we come to the broadcast here. My Bible is open to the book of Titus, Titus in chapter two right now, if at all possible. Reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Titus, please, in chapter two. The sole focus of our time today will be verse 14. Along with your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got some words for you all beginning with the letter S today. Go get a piece of paper and pencil and let's just study the Word of God and as well sharpen our ability to communicate the gospel. You'll see that become very clear in just a moment. I've got our premier gospel tract in my hand right now. It's entitled The New Birth. If you don't know what a gospel tract is, if you don't know what the new birth is, and hang on just a minute, I'll tell you about this tract, tell you how to get it. We want to put it in your hand. We want to put a bunch of tracts in your hand, absolutely free of charge. So please stay tuned and uh, get your Bible open. Let's study God's word together. Now tell me, friend, can you can you tell the gospel in five minutes or less? less, five minutes or less. Now, I think it's really worthwhile for all of us to have a gospel presentation plan that prepares us to tell the gospel in 30 minutes or 15 minutes, in 10 minutes, and even five minutes. Now, it takes some thought to do that. Some folk have told me and said, well, Brother Mark, I can tell the gospel in less than a minute. And when they tell me that, usually what they're doing is just quoting John 3.16. Now, I understand the point, but I do question that John 3.16 all by itself is enough due to the confused, the spiritually confused state of society that we live in today. But friend, if I had just five minutes to tell the gospel, the verse that's before us today may be one of the very best that I could ever go to or you could go to to get our job done of telling the gospel clearly. Now, beloved, if you are the least bit fuzzy on what the gospel is, please stay tuned. We're going to help make God's good news to sinful people very clear by using just one verse, the verse before us today. Day. So get a piece of paper and be ready to jot down six words. They all begin with the letter S and then go memorize the verse before us and then begin to practice telling this verse, the gospel through this verse to a few other believers. Have them help you sharpen your skills and making sure you make it clear and then go tell a lost soul. But for right now, let's sharpen our gospel tools with Titus 2 and verse 14. Before I read that verse, I have that gospel tract in my hand. I called it our premier tract. It's entitled The New Birth. This is the gospel tract that 80 years ago launched this ministry, The New Birth. It was written by our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, and he wrote this tract because so many people 80 years ago were confused about what in the world is the new birth. They'd heard the term. They knew Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he shall never see the kingdom of heaven. But people have been so confused. So he wrote this tract, The New Birth. It lays out, first of all, what the new birth is not, and it says here very clearly that the new birth is not religion, it's not morality, it's not reforming your life, but then it says here is what the new birth is. It's a mystery that cannot be explained, uh, but it's a reality that no man can explain away. And he begins to use the words there, uh, Jesus spoke, and from John chapter 3, he lays out what the new birth is. And finally, he says, why you, dear sinner friend, not, must be born again. Now, friend, listen, there's, this is a great gospel track. More people come to Christ through this track than any of two or three others combined. It's that good. The new birth. 
At the end of this program, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Please do that. We want to send you a free sample packet containing over 40 different gospel tracks. This one, the new birth, will be in there. It'll be the lead one, the front one, as you open it up. Let's become partners together, but let's also sharpen our skill in knowing what the new birth is so we can tell it to others. Please be ready when my announcer gives that information or just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, our one verse today is the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 14. It says this, who, speaking of Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Let me say it again. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. I have six words, all begin with the letter S. Jot them down. I'm going to give all six right up front here. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, surrender. Number two, substitution. Number three, slave. Number four, sin. Number five, secure. And number six, service. Let me give them one at a time and explain them. First of all, the verse talks about surrender. Verse 14 says that Jesus gave himself for us. Now, when we tell the gospel, one key point we need to make is this, that God loves sinners. Jesus willingly gave his life. He surrendered his life out of love so that sinful people could be rescued from sin and the curse of sin on their life, the condemnation of sin. No one took Jesus's life from him. He says very boldly, he lays it down or surrenders it down of his own love for us. His surrender cost him a cruel, murderous death, but his love moved him to do it. That's word number one. Word number two is the word substitution. Again, verse 14 says that Jesus gave himself for us. That's a key word, for us. That word for means he took our place. He died instead of. Jesus was sinless, but he took the punishment that we sinners deserve. He took it on himself. Jesus died in our place as our substitute. Word number three is the word slave. Verse 14 uses this word redeem. Now, many people have heard the word, but we need to explain that that word came out of the slave trade of Jesus's day. Slaves were brought in in chains. They were enslaved. They were owned by the marketeer who brought them in. People had to pay a price to release the slave, to take the slave out of the market so they could take the slave home to be their slave. Now, all of us are sinners. We are enslaved by sin and we can't free ourselves. We need to be redeemed. That's why Christ died as our substitute. That brings us to word number four, which is the word sin. Jesus died in our place to free us from, the verse 14 says, all, three-letter word, A-L-L, all iniquity. When Jesus died on the cross, you probably remember, he said these words, it is finished. He was declaring that the full debt for all sin was totally paid. If Jesus becomes your savior, then all your sins are forever paid. We sing the song, Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. But we move from sin to word number five, which is the word secure. Verse 14 goes on to say that Jesus gave himself to purify unto himself, to to himself, unto himself, a peculiar or special people. Jesus died to free us from the slave market of sin, but he doesn't stop there. He makes us his special people. He calls us the children of God. Once we were called the enemies of God. Now we are the special people of God. He made us his special treasure. Oh, in that slave market, when a person went to the slave market and bought a slave, they took the slave home when the slave was still a slave. When Jesus buys us out of the slave market of sin, he makes us his own child. We're not a slave anymore. 
word number six is the word service. Jesus saves us out of sin's slave market. He cleanses us from all sin. He gives us eternal life. And this life isn't a slave life where we have to do what we're told to do. God gives us his life. And just as Jesus loved serving others, our new life will be marked by a zeal or a desire to do good works like Jesus did. Well, okay, friend, there you have it. Verse 14 tells us the gospel. The verse is not really complicated. You can use it, frankly, with almost anybody. A number of years ago, a man told me this story. There was a lady that moved to uh, the city of Denver, Colorado, and she moved up from Central America. Her English was virtually non-existent, but she loved Christ and wanted to tell the gospel. So she would have her Bible, and she marked various verses. This one is one of them. And she would sit down in the park bench there in Denver, downtown Denver, and she would open the Bible to Titus 2.14 and ask anybody, total strangers, that they sat down at a bench, would they be willing to help her understand this verse? So they would read the verse. You'd ask them what it means. Many of the people would read the verse and then they would explain it to her. As they explained the verse, and normally they got it pretty good, she would ask them if Jesus had purified their hearts yet from sin. Well, guess what? About once a month, somebody came to know Christ as Savior using this one verse, explaining it to this dear lady trying to make her, in her broken English, understand the Bible in English. So, friend, go ahead. Take the verse, use it, memorize it. Practice using it and telling it to on some other believers. Let those other believers give you feedback. Make sure that they help you make it the gospel clear so that it is clear not just to people who are churched people, but non-churched people. And then after you've done that a few times, then go tell the gospel to a lost person. Go tell the gospel. That's our part. Then we let God turn the hearts towards himself. God is the one who came up with the plan of salvation. He is the Savior. He designed the plan, but he allows us to be a part in going to tell the gospel. Let me ask you, dear believer friend, have you ever told the gospel to somebody? If you haven't and you're fearful, here's a verse. Memorize it. Dear friend, perhaps you're listening today and you know a lot about Jesus. You know a lot about his death at Calvary. Perhaps you've been to church virtually all your life. But as Jesus purified your soul from your sin, he died in your place. He died as your substitute. A sin debt has been paid, but it only becomes personal and usable by you when you, by simple faith, receive him. You pray something like this, Father in heaven, I am the sinner. My sin has brought me a curse. Save my soul because Jesus died in my place. Say that prayer to him, friend, from your heart. He'll save your soul today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.